Alright, hello everyone, I'm Session1 Steve, and I'm going to be playing Wardener on the Sega Genesis. So I first saw this game being played during Cuso Grande earlier this year, and decided to try it out for myself, and now here I am speedrunning it for you all. Uh, I'm actually a little surprised that this game got into Big Bad, because uh, I don't think this game is all that terrible. It's certainly not good, but um, I think what really makes this game bad is uh, playing it casually. Uh, you need to stock up on gold <laughs> in between levels in order to buy all the power-ups from the shop, and uh, choosing which power-ups are the best for you. And also, um, when you game over, you lose all your gold in this game, so being able to get to the shop and have all your gold so you can buy all the upgrades, sometimes doesn't work out. Um, and also, the, the level doesn't reset, so you have no chance of going back and picking up that gold again. So, um, other than that, I think uh, this game has some hideous visuals, some weird music, and uh, questionable level design. So, yeah, let's get started. Here we go with Wardner. I'm gonna let the opening cutscene uh, play out. It's so dark here. I wonder where we are. Uh, we're lost. Let's get out of here. The main character kind of reminds me of a certain cartoon character. I won't uh, mention any names. Ooh, what a pretty girl. Come with me to the Wardner. Ha ha ha. As for you, my little friend, you are doomed in this forest of the Wardner. Help! And with that beautiful cutscene, we begin our adventure to go fight the Wardner and rescue our girlfriend Mia. Uh, quick lore fact, um, the main character's name is Dover, D-O-V-E-R, kind of a weird name. Um, so this game basically plays like a ghouls and ghosts clone. Every enemy, every trap is an instant death, unless you get a cape, which I picked up earlier on the level. That gives me a temporary extra hit point. Uh, and there's also a thread that you can buy from the shop that will give you a second additional temporary hit point. Uh, we're going to try to keep that until the end of the level so we can do a really cool uh, damage booster through the, uh, the first boss. Uh, we're trying to pick up as much gold as possible in the first two levels. Uh, as I said, there's a shop in between levels, and we want to get 3,000 gold so we can get the Power of the Sun, which is the most powerful magic that you can get in Wardner. Alright, looks good so far. So, uh, in Wardner, uh, bosses are merely suggestions, so we're just going to damage boost through this dragon, and he'll self-destruct because that's how the game's programmed. On to level 2. Okay. Let me just turn the game down a little bit, just a smidge. I think that's a little better. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got some good tunes in Wardner. I really like this 15 second loop. I think it totally fits the uh, the theme of this level. The theme of this level being some kind of forest sewer dungeon torture factory. And again, we're trying to get some gold here. There's a lot of traps here we need to watch out for. There's a lot of awkward timing. And some of these aren't even on like global timers, so you can like create some really nasty uh, patterns if you're not careful. This all being said, this is probably one of the most intricate levels in the game. There's a lot of variety between the traps and the enemies. Uh, the checkpoint system in this game is actually very forgiving too, um, surprisingly. Uh, there are lives, there are continues. Just trying to time this, perfect. And um, if you game over, if you die, or even if you game over, you will uh, reset right back to where you started, or right back to where you left off, rather. Um, for the most part, there are a few checkpoints that are a little less forgiving. All right, and again, we're trying to round in as much gold as possible. I think we're going to be okay. If not, it's not the end of the world. We'll just get it uh, at the end of level three. So we're coming up to the boss soon. Uh, we're going to try to skip the second boss in this game. Uh, at, at the end of this level, there is a... Oop, there's a death. <laughs> that was a pretty nasty pattern, actually. <clears throat> so we're going to try to uh, skip the second boss. And the way we do that is um, at the end of the level there... Oh, my God. There is a dragon guarding this, uh, this cell where there's a maiden. And um, when you defeat the dragon, it releases the maiden and saves her, but also 
she is uh, transforming into a hideous spider monster. And that's the true boss of level two. We're gonna hopefully skip that if we can get past this section. There we go. Yeah, like I said, these aren't on global timers, so the pattern's different like pretty much every time, even subtly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to try to deal enough damage to the dragon um, that we can bring him to the right side of the screen. Hopefully this all works out. We're gonna do a lot of damage to the dragon and we're gonna lure him to the right side. And if we can kill him while going through the door, it actually bypasses the entire uh, level. That tire boss will just not happen. Oh, almost. There we go. So we were able to skip that boss. And I just picked, I think I picked up. Nope. All right, so we're gonna get in this one. We didn't have enough money. That's okay. We're gonna get in this one. Yeah, the, the gold is a little bit RNG. So this is gonna be a slow level, actually. Oh, that's actually really bad. We gotta be careful here. I really love the music. <laughs> this level actually has really good music. Okay, we're gonna pick up... That flute actually will um, summon a golden chicken that we're gonna pick up. Uh, he's gonna pick us up and we're gonna ride that to the end of the level. We can just sit back and uh, relax, enjoy the wonders of the Sega Genesis' sound chip. We're still okay, we don't have the powerful magic just yet, but we just gotta play it real safe on this boss. All right, we have enough money now, so just gotta play it real safe. This is gonna be a little slow. And this happens sometimes. There was a gold I probably should have taken for safety, but we're good, we're good. All right, and there is the magic we needed. Moving on to level four. So this is, yeah, this is gonna rip all the bosses to shreds now. We're good, we're good. Uh, there's a weird puzzle here that no one would probably ever figure out playing this game casually. So there's three rooms. There's a room with a key, there's a room with this monster, uh, and then there's a witch at the bottom. If you talk to the witch, the witch asks you to get that monster out of the room. And what better way to get a monster out of a room than to kill it, you would think, right? Well, that doesn't solve the puzzle. So what you actually had to do is what I just did there. You are very smart, take this shortcut. You had to actually go to the top room, jump over those falling, you know, those fake platforms, um, get the key, drop down through one of those fake platforms into the boss's room, the monster's room, dodge all of his attacks, and then uh, use the key on the door, let him charge at you and follow, out, follow you out of the room, and then he self-destructs. Kind of a convoluted puzzle. That, so that solves the puzzle, gives you a shortcut, saves maybe a little bit of time in the speed run, but is completely, completely useless if you're playing casually. Like you would think it would give you like a life or a, a power up or something. No, nothing. It's just a shortcut and it doesn't save any time. I just use it because it's a little more consistent than going through the maze and fighting some more. Yeah, there's like another dragon I think you have to fight there. By the way, I don't have to explain, this fairy is really useful. It does a lot of damage and also can block projectiles. So I kind of want to keep it throughout the game if I can. It's going to totally wreck this boss. Watch this. Ready? Just sit here and he's dead. That was actually the fastest I've ever killed him. He's dead before he can like even spawn. We're going into level 5 already. This game goes fast. Oh, I'm going to wait a little bit here. Okay, let's wait. Wait for the cycle. Okay, go. We gotta play this a little bit safe. We're out of shops now. There's no more shops until the end of the game, so... Uh, we want to keep all of our goodies. One thing I do want to show off here, though... This this fire pit here. So, like I said, this game was played during Cuso Grande, and this is gonna shock maybe, like, two people. Um, so someone got to this point, and they fell into that pit for whatever reason. And that pit is not an instant kill. It just does one point of damage. So if you have a cape, you actually take the point of damage, but you're still alive in the bottom of this pit. Um, and, you know, the player thought it was a soft lock. I think everyone thought it was a soft lock. But, in fact, it is not. This is actually a really obscure secret. You can crouch and jump through this little passage here. There's a time bonus and a one-up. So, yeah, I just want to show that off real quick. Yeah, this is, this is Cartman's quest. <laughs> uh, this level's pretty straightforward. Um, we're just gonna kind of play it safe. There's a lot of things we can do um, that will actually be really bad. 
Let's play this safe, though. That's okay. I want to have at least my cape going into the final level, if I can. Oh, that's really bad! It's okay. We fell into this off lock. Alright, so I won't be able to show off one of the uh, skips in the last level. But that's okay. This game is easy enough. Oh my goodness. I got a really bad pattern with that. Okay. This is just, this is how marathon runs go, right? <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot to say about this level. I can play this a little bit less safe now. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that egg. I got a really bad pattern on it. I guess I hit it too many times. And it went too high. <laughs> That's how it goes. Oh, this game's perfectly playable. This is my favorite part of the game, by the way, is, uh, are these, these fire, these, like, uh, completely unanimated static fire backgrounds. Well, like the rest of the game, there's, there's animated fire left and right. Like the whole game is like, is fire, basically. Like all your attacks, all the enemy death animations. Definitely the longest and uh, most tedious level. There's no interesting skips in this one. The most interesting thing was that soft lock that wasn't a soft lock. There is a way you, you can actually go through those, those fireballs, but the timing's really precise. It's not worth it. If there's time, if I'm still underestimate, oh jeez. If I'm still underestimate, um, I do want to show off uh, a glitch in the last level. All right, we're coming up to the boss of level five now, and we're still good. We're just gonna have to fight uh, a couple bosses that we could have skipped. Actually, just one boss that we could have skipped. All right, so I stay left here. Um, so I can manipulate his bullets so they go over my head because uh, he fires wherever you're standing at the time he spawns that fire orb then uh, it'll be what, whatever height you're at so this is this part is gonna be kind of bad this is where the level design gets a little questionable those heads can be really really annoying we got one more orb we're gonna get later on too when we fight the rock monster again. So we have this big boss rush. And here is the best part of Wardner. This is the pinnacle of level design. It keeps going. And guess what? That's only the first. There's two more. And these are way, way harder than they look. I made them look really easy there. It's not gonna go that well the second time. <laughs> Spooky ghost just in time for Halloween. All right, let's, let's see if we can get the heads just as good as last time. All right, cool. We're in. All right, hope you like those like one tile jumps. So we got more. This is copy-paste right here. Copy-paste level design. If I can get the timing, that'd be great. Of course I get this part good, and, and level five I, I totally, totally butchered. All right, cool. Yeah, those jumps are, this is probably the best I've ever done those jumps. I literally spent like two minutes on those jumps in practice earlier. <laughs> Okay. We are going to see the spider, unfortunately. Uh, usually I would have a cape at this point. I'd be able to skip her, but it's not going to happen this time. Sorry, guys. 
We get to see what uh, what we skipped earlier in the game. Oh, hopefully I can do enough damage. Her hitbox also really wonky. Oh, we got okay. At least we killed her before we died. Yeah, the hitbox is actually like really small. So we killed her at least when we died, so she doesn't respawn. So at least there's that. <laughs> yeah, this is Dark Souls before Dark Souls. Wow, I'm getting the- like, why am I getting this so good now, but not when I'm going for PBs? This is literally the run killer right here. <laughs> Alright, you gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. We're gonna try to skip this boss, hopefully! Yeah, there we go! Nice. You just jump right over that guy. Ooh, I see an orb. I spy my little eye an orb. Oh, I, I <laughs> he was closer than I thought, I guess. All right, we gotta fight this guy now. Okay, okay. Thanks, game. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know why. I've never seen that before. Okay, that's gonna go a little bit overestimate, I think, now. There we go. He got a little too close for me. Orb. Alright, here's a really bad room. This room's actually RNG. It could be one of, like, four different enemies in this room. And the heads are... That's not what you want to see. And here's the Wardener. I commend your great effort, but you will advance no further. I am the Wardener. You can't defeat me. So we're going to walk right up to him, poke him in the belly button a little bit. He can't hit us there. And he reveals his true form. Fight the real me. Oops. I literally have to dodge like one fireball. That's literally all I have to do. <laughs> because this weapon just totally drains his HP. That was it. That's it. And time's coming up. Time. That's Wardner. <laughs> Could have got a little bit better. A little bit overestimate there with uh, dying on level 5. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, I don't know if I have time to just show a, a glitch real quick. It's literally like 30 seconds. And it's really funny. Let me, let me do it real quick. If it's okay. I found this out literally like... Oops, sorry. So this is the skip I wanted to do. This is the skip I wanted to do. That. And when you do that, the game starts glitching out because that boss is still on screen. And if I die here, this is it. Ready? If I die here, it takes you back to the spider and look at the spider. <laughs> I literally just found this glitch out like an hour before this run. Oh man, it's such a good game. Uh, that's gonna do it for me. That's Wardner. That's all I got. Um, if you're looking for a new Kuso speedrun to pick up, I'd suggest maybe giving this game a shot. I'm currently the only one on speedrun.com leaderboard, so second place is technically free. It's also last place. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. All, uh, so thank you so all so much for having me, and uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Uh, back to you, Rosentia.